This episode is sponsored by Wix. If you need a website, make it yourself with Wix. Hey, what's up guys? Christian here for Chris Art. Today we're looking at a few simple tricks to tackle massive edits. So I'm sure this has happened to you. You're ingesting your, your media from your card onto your computer and you're seeing just how much footage you have to go through. And now this doesn't specifically have to be just for really big edits. It could be for small edits, medium edits, any kind of edits. It honestly has really helped me a lot with uh, speeding through some of the process of just getting that media into Premiere and onto your timeline. So one of the first things that we're gonna look at is inside of Premiere Pro, how you can actually stack timelines on top of each other and how that can give you a much better overview of what you're working with and it'll make it so much easier to actually grab those clips and bringing them into your main timeline. So this is called stack timelines or pancake timelines. It has different names, but it's essentially all the same thing. And you can do this in Premiere because Premiere's UI is entirely customizable. So you can move things around, you can switch tabs, or you can click and drag the tabs onto a different section of your workspace. And this is really great for, for customizing it, but also for what we're about to look at, which is stacking the timelines on top of each other. So you can then grab the clips from one of the timelines and bring them into the next one. If this looks a little bit different than what you have, you can go under Window, Workspaces, and you can uh, select a number of workspaces as well as making your own that you can, uh, you can then select each time that you edit. They have uh, different kind of uh, arrangements for different types of, uh, of projects or type of work that you're doing, and you can find those all here. We kind of talked about this in the last episode, but that's just so you know in case uh, yours look any different than this. But the panels are going to be named the same, so just look for them and just follow along. So I'm going to start by importing some media in here. And uh, you can import media in a number of ways. My usual way of doing it is by just going to Finder and grabbing whatever folder I want and dragging it and dropping it in. Just ignore that. That's just for uh, some clips in my footage. So okay, so we have all of our B-roll here or all the footage that you want to add into your edit or make a new edit from. Uh, what I usually do is I click on this icon and I select to uh, organize them by name since this will usually kind of put them in the right order if you have your camera set to uh, naming things the right way, which my camera does, it just numbers these clips. So if you put them by name, you will just have them in the order in which you uh, shot them in. So that's helpful just because that puts me at least in a timeline where I can remember, okay, this is what I shot, this is what I mentally noted that I wanted to use, and, uh, and this just makes more sense to me. So there's a few things that you can do, obviously, to get started. You can either double click on the clip here, which brings it up into our source monitor, and you can scrub through it. You can kind of take a look at what, what the clip is, and uh, once you find a spot that you like, you can set an endpoint by either clicking on, on this icon over here, or you can hit I on your keyboard, and that will set an endpoint. Then I can, you know, scrub to once we complete this uh, dolly in and I can hit O on my keyboard to set an out point or I can click on this other bracket looking icon. And uh, now we've made a selection in the source monitor. So we can we can either create a new sequence, drag this in. But what I'd like to do is I just like to grab the clip here. You can see that the icon of the cursor now changed to uh, kind of like a hand grabbing something. And then I'm just going to bring it down to my timeline panel and I'm going to let go. So you can see that this has created a sequence automatically for us, which now contains the first clip that we've added. And the nice way about doing it this way, instead of creating, you know, file new sequence or whatever, is that you actually save a ton of time with the settings. Because whenever you create a sequence uh, from, from doing it in the way that you just saw, you're actually creating a sequence that has the same settings as the clip that you were dragging. So this is great for footage and you know you want to make sure that it has the right uh, size or frame rate and all of that. It's just a quick and easy way to do it. And there you go. We have the clip imported into our timeline so we can play it. And uh, you can see that we're seeing this in the program uh, panel over here, which is different than your source. So this is this is just very basic stuff. I'm sorry if I'm boring some of the more advanced users. I just want to make sure that everyone's on the same page and that they understand this difference also because that's primarily what we're going to be talking about whenever we're stacking timelines. 
So let me let me show you how to do that. So right now we only have one sequence and to stack timelines on top of each other, you need more than one sequence. So I'm going to go under file, new sequence, you can hit command N for that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to name my sequence. Uh, this could be, you know, B roll. So the, the B roll that you want to add over your main edit. I'm going to click OK without going into the settings because, again, what I like to do is, uh, you know, I can grab any other clip that I want and I can I can just, you know, drag this in. This warning is going to appear uh, just saying that the clip that you're importing has different settings than, your, than the sequence that you created. What you can do is you can either change the settings of the sequence to match that footage, which is ideally what you want if you're importing clips or footage, or you can keep your existing settings if you have a specific reason of why you would want this uh, ratio size or frame rate or whatever. So I'm going to click on this, and this has now changed. Uh oh. So that has all changed the sequence settings to uh, match the clip that you just imported. So that's great. We have two different timelines. Right now, they only contain a, a clip. So um, let me just add a bunch of other B-roll in here just for us to get started. Now, something that I want to mention while you're importing more clips, for what we're going to be doing in just a second, it would help you to uh, to spend a little bit of time reviewing each clip that you're importing and setting some, some very rough in and out points. You don't need to be specific. It's like doing a garbage mask. You're just being very rough and eliminating whatever is not needed uh, in this portion. So it's not making the cut precise to what you want. It's just getting rid of some of the excess. And you don't have to. You could just either create a new sequence from all these clips or you can you know, drag them and dump them all in a sequence. I like to do it this way just because uh, I know it is a little time consuming to do this individually but it does save you a lot of time uh, later on. So just taking care of this step now is nice. And it's also a, a kind of nice refresher of the footage that you have, like what you are working with. So, all right, let, let's just say that this is good enough. We have a few B-roll clips. So we're back in our first sequence that we created, as you can tell by the program monitor now showing this C0015 sequence that we have selected. So let's say I want to add B-roll. So this other sequence, you can see the monitor changes here. Uh, let's say I want to grab these clips and kind of start putting these selects that we've made into our main sequence. So I'm going to show you something really cool. If I grab this uh, sequence without clicking on it, so just well, you click and hold, you can see that I can now drag and drop this panel wherever I want. So this could work. It kind of makes sense because uh, we're just essentially dragging some some source material into our new timeline. So it kind of could make sense that it's under the source monitor since this is where you usually go to grab your clips. I personally don't do it this way. I usually have a dual monitor set up where both sequences stay in their own monitor. So I have plenty of room to see what I'm working with. This could work just for this example. And I just want to show you what it does to stack timelines. You can have them on top of each other or like you've seen wherever else. But the nice thing is that I can grab, let's say, this portion of the video and I can just drag it and drop it into our other sequence. So you can see now we have this new clip. Now uh, the source monitor is looking at something different because it has its own clip in there. So this could be a, a, a nice way of also grabbing things from multiple places. Let's say you have an interview going on and they're providing some of the narration for whatever B-roll you're adding on top. So this could be a great way to you know import your main clip in here of the person talking. You can grab different points, different parts of that interview or whatever in here, and then you can have all of your B-roll separate into this other timeline. We can then just go here without losing this from your source monitor and dropping in other things from there. So again, very useful for, for interviews, that kind of thing. This makes adding B-roll super, super quick. And yeah, the nice thing is I can go in here. Once I select this other timeline, my program monitor is now showing me whatever's in here. I can make small edits, try out different ideas. You could even have another timeline intermediate to these two where you can kind of drop some things to try them out and kind of make small section edits at a time and then import them in your main piece. So you can stack as many times as you want, place them wherever. Uh, if you have enough room for it, go for it. I always like seeing things kind of spread out in front of me uh, so that I know what I have. One quick thing that I always do is to double click on the main video where I have most of the clips. So I'm going to make some room from the audio and kind of zoom in here. And the reason why I like to expand this is because then it gives you a small thumbnail that shows you a preview 
of what that clip contains. And that makes it a bit easier to find what you're looking for. It's kind of having the same idea as with having a bin open to me. You know, it's like you can see the thumbnail, you can kind of get an idea of what the clip is. So by expanding that and having that thumbnail, that helps me, that helps me a lot. So I'm gonna show you another way of stacking timelines which could be even better depending on what you're doing. If you're doing interview type of stuff with that specific example that I, that I mentioned earlier, I would go with this setup. But if you're wanting to use shortcuts to import your, your B-roll or your clips into another sequence, then this next trick might be a better way for you to stack timelines. So let's take a look at that. I just want to take a few seconds to thank our sponsor and let you know what the sponsor is about because it's helped me out a lot with uh, my own brand, my own website. I built my entire website, in fact, with Wix. So as you're seeing here playing the background, you're seeing how I actually built my website. You're seeing all the back end of it. You can see how easily I can just move things around. And if I want to update it with some other pages or some new content coming out, I can easily do that without having to worry about signing into some weird database or just coding something, which I have no clue how to do. I've tried it before, didn't really work, and it was just honestly a hassle. Once you have something go wrong, the whole thing goes down, you need to really figure it out, go through the code. If you wanna make any changes, even once you do figure it out, then you have to figure it out again because you need to add stuff, and it's just a nightmare. I, I really wanna avoid coding whenever it is possible. And if you're an editor, if you're a filmmaker like myself and you wanna have hands on your own website and you wanna update it freely, then I really think that Wix can be a great solution for you. So even though there is no coding required, I never felt limited in any way with Wix. And aside from being code free, it's completely online. It's an online platform to build your online platform. So it's great because you don't have to download anything, you don't have to upgrade anything ever, it just works. You sign in and you're ready to go. And to make it even easier, you can get started with one of their many, many templates which are designed by pros and they look amazing. So it's a great place to start if you don't wanna just start with a blank canvas. But honestly, even if you do start from scratch like I did, it is super easy to get started and build your own website. And with just a few clicks, you can get some really nice effects like parallax effects that really make your website feel very modern and just up to date with the latest trends. As much as I appreciate their support, I wouldn't recommend them if it wasn't something that I would think was actually useful. And I've been using them for years and I honestly recommend them genuinely for anyone who asks me what they could do to build their own website. So head on over to Wix and get started on creating your own website. All right. So let me show you the new way of doing this. So let's grab our B-roll sequence and instead of just double clicking on it, I'm actually going to grab it just like a clip and I'm gonna drag and drop it into my source monitor. So now what has happened is that I have a bunch of clips back to back in my source monitor. I essentially opened that sequence in here. So I'm, as I'm scrubbing through this, I'm scrubbing through that entire sequence. Okay, great, so now we have this and you can tell that this first step is already very different from what we did before. So what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna go to this wrench icon, which is the settings for the source monitor. And I'm gonna click on open sequence and timeline. And it's just gonna open up all of this that's in here into its own timeline. And now we can kind of do the same thing as before. Uh, but this time, instead of just dragging it into another panel, I'm gonna stay within the timeline panel and I'm gonna click and drag it onto this section over here. And this gives me a proper stacked timeline you can stack them in the same way you know obviously in the other way of doing this too but the reason why i prefer to stack them in, in this way for this specific example is that now i can preview the clip and you can see that now my source monitor is updating with whatever's in this timeline versus before whatever timeline you would click on is whatever would stay active in the program monitor and the source monitor would not be affected it would have its own thing in there so now this is nice because you're already seeing that you can literally make in and out points in here and do the same thing. But now, because this is a timeline opened up from the source monitor, you can now have all of the insert, overwrite, shortcuts, functions, and you can see that that has added that clip into my main timeline. So this makes inserting things so much faster. You can even see the timeline indicator is different to show you that you're in a source uh, opened sequence. And from there, you can, you can just have your usual way of importing things, your usual hotkeys of whichever way you bring in footage into your timeline. But you can have a huge selection of, of, of B-roll, of good moments that you wanna just quickly go through and insert as you go along. <laughs> And then another thing that I usually do whenever I'm tackling really big 
timelines and I don't want to confuse myself is I'll just make some uh, some notes and usually those notes will be on some sticky notes that I place right on my monitor and I could use the notes app in my Mac or pages or any kind of Word document, but I prefer to have something physical that's always gonna be there for me. So whenever I'm editing and I have that open and spread out on my monitor, I can just glance down and look at some of the notes. And usually what I'll write in those sticky notes are things like time codes, or whenever I'm color coding my clips or sections on my timeline, I'll sort of have a legend in one of the sticky notes, which details what color everything matches to. So for example, red could be B-roll, blue could be camera A, yellow camera C, or B or whatever. You could just make whatever colors work best for you. And then having a sticky note right there could be a nice reminder that tells you what each color stands for. And then one of the final things just to be safe is to duplicate your timelines as backups. So whenever you're making any major changes to your edit, make a duplicate copy of it. You can name it with the date or with the version number, or whatever works for you, but have a backup copy whenever you're making any significant changes to your edit. This way, if you wanna go back or something doesn't really work or doesn't feel right, you have something to revert back to. And just like we've seen with the stack timelines where you can have that, that middle timeline to give you some freedom to experiment, this is another great way of doing it. If you have a duplicate copy, you can be a lot more daring and just try different things, think outside the box, get weird with it, and, uh, and see what works and what doesn't. And if it doesn't work, you have something to go back to. All right, now bonus tip. Another thing that you can do in Premiere to stay organized is to color code your things in your, in your timeline. You can see that I have a legend here on the sticky note for a previous edit that I did. And the way you do this is by right clicking on the clip, go under label, and you can pick a color. So hopefully this helps with uh, not feeling too overwhelmed whenever you're starting a project from scratch or whenever you're editing a, a really big timeline. The lighting workshop that we did, uh, that edit was insane. And these techniques have really helped a ton in making that edit actually doable. Follow me on Instagram at Chris Quart for more filmmaking tips or behind the scenes of this sort of stuff and the setup that we're using today. And also I would love for you to join us in the live streams that are happening every Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We do giveaways, it's just a ton of fun. We get to hang out and if you have any questions about editing, about these workshops or anything at all, you can ask them there. All right guys, that is it for this episode. Don't miss next week's episode. We're talking about audio in Premiere. Literally everything you need to know to get started. That's a bold statement but it's gonna be a lot of information and it should be a fun time. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is Chris Trini for Chris Guar, and I will see you next time. I wanted to quickly thank again Wix for sponsoring this video, for supporting this channel. It's so important when it comes to free education to actually make this sustainable. And if you want to check out my website, chrisquart.com, there's a ton of articles there related to editing, the gear that I use, and, and other stuff. So hopefully you'll find that interesting. And of course, the website, chrisquart.com, was built entirely on Wix.